one, two. Is not good. I'm thank you. I, uh, timing didn't work, but I, I, I yeah. I, yeah, but you know, it's it's uh, it's silly. It has like two buttons, and then uh, it's. And it, it worked for me a lot, through those few times. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you were supposed to do there. Uh, so, uh, wha how do I start it, or is it already being streamed? So, they, uh, do they hear me now, or there'll be some button to press? Not me. Let me plug and plug this thing after all the messing yeah. around I did. Thanks and uh, thank you for coming here. Um, so
So um, let me first acknowledge my collaborators. Uh, oh, you can see oh, the pointer. OK. So um, let me maybe move the pointer or keep blocking partially the screen. So the work uh, is primarily done by uh, these two people, Francois Ahmed, who was a former postdoc, and uh, Chen Ting Ke, who is a uh, current st graduate student and is looking for postdoctoral position. And uh, former student Ivan Borzenets, who uh, pretty much set the system but uh, didn't have a chance to measure because <coughs> he went on to start his postdoc uh, with Higuita Rucha in Tokyo, um, uh, with, uh, whose group he collaborated on uh, making the samples. So I'm going uh, to first talk about brief bound states and the physics of the superconductor normal superconductor junctions at zero magnetic field and show the examples of ballistic uh, supercurrent in uh, graphene and only then switch to the main subject of the superconductivity in the quantum hole regime. And uh, there are uh, interesting possible interpretations of our results which are kind of separated in the last section of the talk. So the motivation for this work comes from this general interest to topological superconductivity. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, combining superconductivity super with quantum hole states where uh, interesting things are predicted. My runners at filling factor nu equals 1 and power fermions at uh, fractional filling factors. But uh, the fact of the matter is that superconductivity and quantum hole do not mix well. And the fancy way of saying is uh, that uh, is uh, to say that magnetic field required for a quantum hole breaks the time reversal symmetry, which is essential for uh, superconducting parity. In uh, less fancy words, I'm uh, just going to uh, discuss the uh, uh, Andrea bound states, which are required for the formation of supercurrent and how those are affected by the high magnetic field. Now, people have uh, tried uh, to observe uh, supercurrents in uh, traditional 3-5 uh, uh, systems, and uh, uh, this is a review which is summarizing uh, the leading people who were uh, attempting uh, this uh, uh, type of studies. And you see that from the title of the review, the word uh, supercurrent in the quantum hole is conspicuously absent. Now, uh, so SNS junction uh, can support supercurrent, which uh, colloquially is described by uh, saying that Cooper pairs leak uh, from the superconductor uh, to the normal region and establish the coupling between the two uh, leads. Uh, the, uh, I guess, different language of describing the same process is to focus on Andreev bound states where you say an electron propagating upwards is absorbed in the superconductor by uh, as a Cooper pair, thereby creating a hole which propagates backward. Uh, and if it reaches uh, the other superconductor, uh, takes a Cooper pair out of that superconductor and sends an electron back on the trajectory. So this way, you transfer uh, Cooper pairs between the two superconductors and establish your uh, supercurrent. And uh, this type of uh, behavior can be also observed in the topological system as uh, uh, done here in the Mears group uh, in the uh, topological in the um, two-dimensional topological insulator, the quantum uh, spin hole effect system. You have those uh, counter-propagating uh, states formed on the edges. So you can, uh, with uh, opposite spin, so you can send an electron with one spin orientation form the scooper pair and return the hole in the uh, state with an opposite spin. So essentially, each of those edges can support its own supercurrent so that you have essentially squid-like geometry. And if you apply small magnetic field, you observe a squid-like pattern. The problem uh, with uh, this type of uh, arrangement in a quantum hole system is that uh, both types of uh, 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 states, the spin up and spin down, are propagate and uh, electrons and holes propagate uh, along a chiral edge state in the same direction. So if you are trying to think of sending an electron and returning it as a hole along the same edge, you find that uh, the uh, hole cannot return. Now, there are still some uh, possibility for establishing uh, the 
a brief bound state in this case, you have to think about an electron which is propagating along one edge and then the hole returns along the opposite edge. And the possibility of such process was first uh, uh, proposed in this uh, fairly obscure paper. Maybe uh, some of uh, uh, you know about it. My colleague Albert Chang uh, pointed to me the existence of this paper about the same time I found it independently. But uh, basically, the picture here shows a circular sample with two-point contacts. And what these people realized is that you can send electron one way around this uh, sample and then uh, scatter it as a whole <coughs> going back and uh, this way to complete uh, the Andreev bound state. So uh, I'm going to talk later on how you can apply this type of picture for a sample which has a finite distance between the counter-propagating edge states, sort of how do you connect those states along the superconducting contacts. But that is essentially the setup that's, uh, uh, well, not exactly a puzzle, but uh, that's a picture uh, with which I'm going to work, and I'm going to discuss also uh, uh, how to complete this mechanism and also alternative possibilities of explaining our observations. So I'm now switching to the uh, measurements uh, in the zero magnetic field regime. Uh, we are working with, um, uh, by now, the standard uh, 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 geometry uh, of uh, 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 graphene boron nitride stacks and uh, one dimensional contacts, which are formed by etching the stack and evaporating the metal on the sides. Um, we are using molybdenum uranium, which has a relatively large uh, critical uh, field and uh, critical temperature. And uh, we are working in a geometry where uh, the sample has uh, two contacts, but we are measuring it in a four probe geometry so that uh, say we are sending current and measuring voltage. So the contribution of the leads and filters and all of that is excluded. Uh, the samples are fairly small. So these are the samples in which we studied whole. Uh, I'm going to return to this very set of samples uh, slightly later. In the meanwhile, let me just show how these type of samples behave uh, at zero magnetic field. So uh, this is, again, a different set of samples uh, made on the same stack with uh, different lengths between the contacts. And three of them have the same width of the contacts of three microns, and one of them is slightly uh, wider, five microns, the longest one. So we normalize uh, the conductance by... Uh, which is width and which is length? Length is the distance traditionally in the... Um, uh, uh, distance between the contacts, yeah. What, what might think of the width of the length? I'm sticking with uh, uh, Josephson Junction uh, term, ter term, yeah. So, and there the width of the contact is... Uh, so uh, I'm dividing the conductance by uh, the width but what I'm saying is that for three of those samples, the width is the same. So I'm essentially uh, dividing them by a constant number. What I'm trying to show here is that uh, conductance uh, per width of the contact is independent of the length, which tells me that uh, the junctions are ballistic. And also, on the end side, it approaches a, a quantum conductance, which tells me that uh, the contact transparency for electrons is uh, quite high approaching one. And of course, there, is, um, there are PN junctions close to both interfaces on the P side. So that gives you uh, the uh, oscillations, uh, Fabry-Perot oscillations, which you'll see uh, better on this image. So here I'm plotting the uh, differential resistance as a function of the bias current and the gate voltage. Uh, again, you have here the Dirac point, the P-doped regime, the M-doped regime. You have larger critical current on the N side. And on the P side, you have those uh, Fabry-Pirot oscillations, which are visible both in the magnitude of the critical current and in the value of the differential resistance above the critical current. So these two are compared here. The normal conductance and critical current clearly oscillate in phase and uh, roughly proportional to each other. Now, you can also, from the same plot, extract the multiple Andreev reflections and uh, check that uh, the gap is, uh, is expected about 1.2 millielectron volts. Now, 
in the same set of samples, uh, the samples uh, of lengths from 200 nanometers to 2 microns, uh, we can measure the temperature dependence of the supercurrent. And uh, it turns out that in the SN, SN uh, junctions, the behavior is expected to depend on uh, the lengths and on the comparison of the lengths with the coherence lengths induced in the normal metal. So if uh, L is shorter than Xi, then uh, you have the short junction limit. If L is longer than Xi, you're supposed to have the long junction limit, which was predicted uh, back uh, in the first Kulik's paper before the KO1 and KO2 limits. And um, the original result there uh, were later substantiated and corrected by Ishii, Bardin Johnson, and Svidzinski's group. So uh, the bottom line for my purpose is that the critical current is expected to depend exponentially on the ratio of the temperature to some energy scale, which is uh, proportional to the level spacing up to some coefficient of 2 pi squared. The physics there, let me just jump one step ahead, is that for the short junction, you are supposed to have Andreev bound states, which depend on phase in the uh, cosine wave, presuming there is no backscattering, while for the long junction, you have a set of equidistant Andreev bound states, which corresponds to the electrons uh, going uh, back and forth in the long junction and uh, acquiring the phase uh, on the reflection from the uh, interface and additional phase from the phase difference, but mostly uh, having uh, uh, kind of uh, energy dependence uh, as expected for a ballistic system. So in this case, summing uh, over those states uh, over uh, their thermal occupation, you're expected to get uh, this uh, summing over this infinite series, you're expecting to get uh, the exponential suppression of current as a function of temperature. And uh, again, the characteristic energy here depends on the Fermi velocity, which is constant in graphene, and the length between the contacts. So you expect that uh, the slope of those curves would not depend on the gate voltage, but would become steeper and steeper as you go from uh, the shorter to the longer junctions. So that's what we indeed observe here. We have. Uh, uh, lines of roughly the same slope, uh, which is uh, the steepest for the longest junction. And eventually, when uh, L becomes uh, shorter than Xi, significantly shorter than Xi, you have the short junction limit, which is uh, also fitted here by the gray line. OK. Um, just to uh, be done with the zero magnetic field range, you can also check that your supercurrent is uni uniform by measuring the Fraunhofer pattern in small magnetic field. Uh, now going, uh, if there are no questions, I'm going to go to the high magnetic field. And this is kind of an overview of uh, different regimes which you have here. So this is uh, differential resistance as a function of magnetic field and gate voltage. Uh, the Fraunhofer, which I was just showing you, uh, is measured at some uh, millitesla and corresponds to your trajectories going straight between the contacts, or at least simplistically we can think that way. And then you have uh, two different regimes clearly visible uh, here, first uh, discussed uh, in, uh, well, at least in this context uh, in the paper by Gaim's group. So uh, the two regimes correspond to the cyclotron diameter being larger or smaller than the distance between the contacts. If the cyclotron diameter is larger, so it's smaller magnetic field, it's larger than the distance between the contacts, the electrons cannot complete the cyclotron orbit. And moreover, this work shows you can imagine a trajectory which is bouncing uh, several times from the contacts and the walls of the sample, uh, completing uh, an Andreev bound state and resulting in a non zero supercurrent. So you see that in this regime you have mostly suppressed differential conductance. That's happening at the edge. You yes. It's bouncing off the end of the <coughs> yes. You, you need to have the, the edge. Walls, the three walls, right? Yes. The, you need to have uh, both contacts and the wall to complete this trajectory. Yeah. Um, 
I'm uh, not particularly uh, uh, addressing this regime and whether this mechanism is indeed true. What we observe is uh, not necessarily contradicting to what they are saying, and uh, um, I, you know, to, to, to an extent I know it's uh, uh, pictures uh, is is uh, is valid and. Uh, um, uh, we are interested in the regime uh, above uh, uh, this parabolic uh, boundary, which is you know, clearly seen in the experiment. So um, we are, uh, you know, going above this boundary. You have uh, the possibility to have the quantum Hall effect because the size of the cyclotron orbits is smaller than uh, the distance between the contacts and you know, the boundary between. Uh, those two regimes of supercurrent, which is visible here, zero differential resistance, and the quantum hole is uh, quite clear. Now, this regime has been uh, addressed before, uh, primarily in the diffusive samples, although the last work is uh, uh, also done in uh, uh, ballistic boron nitrate samples. And uh, so far, no uh, supercurrent has been observed, although uh, people have seen enhancement of uh, conductance. So here I'm showing a, a plot from uh, Schoenenberger's group um, rotated to align it with this one. You have the fan of uh, Landau levels and uh, the conductance is enhanced up to a point where uh, the leads go normal. Okay, so the uh, colors are opposite because that's conductance, that's resistance. Yeah. So now we are uh, doing the previous measurements, in fact, applying a finite uh, DC current on top of the uh, probing current in order to uh, enhance the quantum hole features. If you now turn off this uh, DC current and leave only the uh, AC current with which we are probing the system, we see that uh, the reasons, regions of uh, suppressed uh, re resistance extend much further going uh, on top of the plateaus. Um, the effect is uh, clearly mesoscopic, meaning uh, you have uh, lots of uh, variation as a function of gate voltage. If you return within the same sweep, you have um, the same spot still there, but uh, there seems to be a little regularity in the appearance of those spots. So I'm going to show uh, the results picking uh, some of the, the spots we have studied. Uh, so uh, actually one way of kind of uh, additional way of uh, visualizing it is essentially to represent both measurements uh, in one plot. So here we are doing the following. We are st staying in one magnetic field and measuring two lines as a function of gate voltage, one at zero bias and then one at finite bias. And this way, we are doing the whole map so that you see those alternating lines with higher conductance, which uh, highlights the quantum hole features, and then lines at smaller bias, which highlight those regions of suppressed uh, resistance due to the supercurrent. So you see that those regions are clearly extending along the plateaus above that boundary uh, corresponding to the uh, 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 semi-classical regime. So uh, now another way of looking at this data is to plot a cross section at finite magnetic field as a function of uh, gate voltage and uh, DC current. So we are uh, measuring differential resistance while sweeping uh, the current. Uh, this I and this IDC are supposed to be the same thing. So you, what you see in this case is the uh, regions of uh, plateaus, new equals uh, 6, 10, 14. And on top of uh, each plateau, you see that at zero bias, uh, there are spots of uh, suppressed uh, resistance. I'm going to show the vertical cuts in the next uh, view graph. But uh, again, we can compare the differential resistance measured at finite bias and at zero bias. And then we see that at zero bias, you have some remnants of the plot. Sorry, at finite bias, you have the remnants of the plateaus. And then at zero bias, you have uh, dips corresponding, as I'll show next, to the uh, supercurrent. Okay. Um.
Yes, uh, I mean, you, you, you s well, the critical current at zero field is uh, microamps, and here you see uh, it's something, at least the measured switching current is uh, sub nanoamp. Uh, are you asking about this picture? Yeah, so that's uh, six nanoamps versus zero nanoamps. So six nanoamps is enough to suppress the supercurrent. I would not say that this junction goes normal because your leads are still superconducting. You are applying only uh, some tens of microvolts, so way smaller than the gap. So it's not a normal resistance of the junction, it's a resistance of the junction while it's uh, uh, supercurrent, coherent part of the current is suppressed. You still have a uh, large gap which makes your uh, measurement different from just a regular quantum hole measurement. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Here the critical current is persistent because uh, in uh, the ap applied bias of six nanoamps because in this regime the uh, current, uh, critical current is uh, uh, 10 nanoamps or more. So this uh, six nanoamp is just chosen to be um, enough to suppress the supercurrent uh, above the boundary sort of in the quantum hole regime but not enough to suppress supercurrent in the uh, semi-classical regime. So I'm mm -hmm. also wondering if we apply much more than that, do you still have to respond to other features? I mean, how does this calculate? So is it something that calculates more? So I have, uh, I can show later the resistance measured at a uh, high temperature. And quantization uh, becomes better at high temperature when your contacts are uh, behaving more like normal contacts. So my, my point is that uh, at least for the ranges of currents we are using here, the leads are still superconducting, so you are not measuring the normal resistance, you are measuring, uh, you know, you, you could have asked why uh, do we have quantum hole features at all, given that we have two superconductors which have uh, 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 zero uh, density of states for individual electrons. So Somehow, yeah. Do we make them inject pairs? But incoherently, right? So you yeah. send the pairs along the edge state and you accept so them, that's yeah. That's uh, experimentally, it, it, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure whether it would give you the exact quantization, but. So. Yeah, but uh, I, I think that the fact that, uh, in, in fact, it's, uh, I guess, uh, in, in retrospect, surprising that you have uh, almost normal behavior given that uh, single particles cannot uh, enter those contacts and cannot exit from those contacts. So somehow those need to be pairs uh, uh, flowing from the superconductor and then entering the other superconductor, but not mediating supercurrent. So in a magnetic field, <coughs> nothing is gapless because you have uh, a Tesla on different mm -hmm. kinds of vortices and stuff. Yeah. But I'm not sure that you can argue that it's impossible to inject different particles in the So, uh, that's yeah, method. that's, yeah, uh, getting to the question, uh, we are talking about a mechanism which is requiring an electron to go, uh, electron slash hole to go around the junction. And that's exactly the questions of whether that mechanism is realistic and what could be instead of it and how to check it. So I think I, I'm not going to run away from that question. <laughs> uh, um, do, you, do you know the size of the size of the, uh, you mean the uh, scale of the critical current or? No, resistance, the resistance that they may uh, ha have it here, right? So uh, the, 
quantized value would be somewhere here, right? 4.2 or something like that. So first of all, it's off, and second, it's uh, you know having all those fluctuations, which uh, again uh, gets. Uh, I can show you the quantization as a function of temperature for this sample and the longer sample. It gets uh, uh, much better as you raise the temperature, which to me tells that this uh, correction compared to the quantized value is due to something which is superconducting and requires superconducting contacts because increasing the temperature makes your contacts effectively normal while your uh, quantum hole still persists. Okay. No, I think it's smaller, but uh, uh, comparable. So this is um, maybe actually of the order of one, yeah. So uh, this is uh, six uh, e squared over h here. Yeah, so this may be of the order of one. The red curve is uh, in the regime uh, where uh, supercurrent is observed. The black one is uh, beyond the uh, you know, visible supercurrent, but I'm arguing that your leads are still uh, essentially superconducting because uh, raising the temperature would uh, flatten and raise the black curve to toward a quantized value. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the effect is opposite. And uh, that's, by the way, the same sign which uh, Schoenbergers ha have seen. So what I'm saying is that I think that there are still processes which uh, enhance your uh, conductivity because if you uh, believe this mechanism, which I didn't tell about yet, of uh, bringing an electron in and sending a hole uh, in reverse, that would be uh, your uh, B BTK style enhancement of uh, conductance. So I think that uh, uh, something like that may be uh, the reason for uh, the enhanced conductance of the black curve. Uh, again, uh, the black curve is uh, kind of a proxy for the normal behavior, but not quite a normal behavior because uh, it's, uh, uh, superconductivity is not uh, in any ways affected in the superconducting context, but uh, it's only the states and the normal region which you are biasing. Okay. Um, if that's okay, I'm going to move forward, but uh, that's kind of the uh, uh, questions which will be important for uh, trying to see if the explanation that uh, we uh, picked is uh, uh, making sense. So, uh, well, that's probably uh, one of the uh, nicer uh, points uh, uh, picked from uh, several points we have studied. So you fix magnetic field and uh, gate voltage uh, in the new equals two regime, and you're measuring the IV curves and DVDI curves. So this one is a derivative of that one. And you see that your region of uh, superconducting superconducting branch uh, is uh, quite clear at the base temperature, but gets progressively washed as the temperature is increased. This is a resistance at zero current as a function of temperature, so typical scale over which it is washed is a half a Kelvin. Uh, I don't really believe the next graph, but I'm going to show uh, it anyways kind of as a simple uh, way of uh, uh, kind of explaining why those energy scales make sense. Uh, so this is, again, some uh, other spot and DVDI measured in that spot. And the resistance at zero current measured as a function, log of resistance measured as a function of one over T. And it kind of looks like uh, an Arrhenius plot uh, with the characteristic uh, energy, which is 70 millikelvin, corresponding to the critical current of three nanoamps, which is uh, consistent and with uh, of the same order of magnitude as a critical current which we actually measure. So something uh, which could be said about 
an actually larger current, which is uh, washed by thermal fluctuation to a smaller measured current of one nanoamp. This consideration, uh, by the way, excludes the effect which I was talking earlier in the sa very same talk where you are smearing uh, the population of Andreev bound states, which also would have effect on the uh, value of the critical current itself. This Arrhenius plot with a fixed Josephson energy assumes that your critical current is temperature independent. Well, of course, here it should be. But at least uh, maybe it's indication that uh, it is uh, uh, reasonable. Another estimate would be to say that something like uh, uh, quantization energy, actually I'll have to uh, show later how we can get this estimate divided by uh, quantum of resistance would give you some nano amp uh, scale current. Okay, so uh, uh, the next measurement you can do is to uh, look at the dependence of the critical current as a function of magnetic field. And this is, by the way, probably the last but one type of measurement uh, which I'm going to show. So uh, if you want to tune back in, it's a, a perfect uh, uh, opportunity. So I'm uh, plotting here the differential resistance as a function of bias again. So this is our supercurrent. As a function of magnetic field in very small increments plotted on uh, applied on top of a large quantized field of one Tesla. What we see here is that uh, the critical current is periodic and uh, the same type of pattern is observed at different filling factors here, plus and minus two. And, uh, uh, plus and minus two holds in electrons, and oh, yeah, I don't remember whether one this is plus. Is yeah, one of those, those electrons and others hold, but I'm not sure which one is which. And uh, uh, I don't want to flash the next view graph if you're looking here, but uh, let me talk through the uh, things which we see. So it looks like uh, something at least. Uh, uh, overall looking like a squid-like pattern. Uh, and what's important is that periodicity is the same as the uh, periodicity of the Fraunhofer pattern uh, measured at zero field, uh, which is something I'm going to discuss next. Now here are several filling factors, again, the same periodicity. Here it's uh, 2, 6, and 10, 2, 6, and 10. And again, the same uh, periodicity of the uh, critical current as a function of magnetic field. So there is a random offset which is not random. There is a random, uh, there is an offset of, uh, there is a phase which is dependent on the gate voltage, which is the uh, biggest argument against the squid picture. Uh, I will see, show in a second why uh, the question uh, kind of could, be, could not be answered because, uh, let me jump ahead because that, uh, let, let, let me hold on. I, I mean, it's, uh, it's dependent on gate voltage in a continuous fashion. So essentially, if you take the next gate voltage, it's going to shift the picture slightly. So the uh, zero, if you project it to zero, would be dependent on gate. Okay. Now, of course, I, can, I cannot measure. Yes. Exactly. This is. Uh, I'm going to show exact sort of zoom into this type of uh, picture with tiny gate voltage and gate, but uh, those pictures I was just showing are tiny range of magnetic field and bias. In the kind of vert yeah, th this bias and uh, slight uh, change in magnetic field. So you are staying, uh, say, at some values of uh, gate voltage, changing the magnetic field slightly, and also measuring. Yeah, I, I, I will show an exactly type of um, map that you, you are asking about, which is magnetic field and gate voltage, which would be a huge zoom into this picture. That would be the last kind of type of uh, data to, yeah. So. Uh, this is tangentially related. Uh, it's not quite the answer to Leonid's question, but uh, what I'm uh, showing here is this uh, Fraunhofer pattern. It's small field, the semi-classical regime 
uh, identified by Gaines group. You see that uh, the critical current here is uh, fairly large, you know, reaching to uh, maybe hundreds of nanoamps. And uh, if we are measuring it at uh, six nanoamps, as we were doing, we see uh, the superconducting region under the uh, parabola. And then finally, we are arriving to the quantum hole regime. We see that the current is yet again much smaller than in the previous regime. And what's important for me is that this pattern is clearly not a natural continuation of the Fraunhofer pattern. Once you are uh, applied the magnetic field of a few millitesla, the picture is completely uh, random, at least looks to me like random. And then as you apply yet higher field, the picture becomes periodic. So to me, this is a strong indication that this picture has to be explained in terms of the edge state. And we are getting back to the question of how do you connect the electrons and counterpropagating holes, which are separate on, separated on the different sides of the sample to create an Andreev bound state. So uh, the solution which, uh, well, actually was proposed before the experiments uh, comes in this uh, paper by Binnaker's group and it's actually based on the earlier uh, work by Hoppe, Zulik, and Sean, uh, which talks about hybridization of electron and hole states running along the edge state along the superconductor. So here's a, a redrawing from their paper showing the semi-classical trajectories of electrons in red, uh, in black and holes in red. Uh, the point being that an electron cannot enter the superconductor and has to be reflected, Andreev reflected as a hole. So you have the alternation of electrons and holes and electrons and holes and so on, uh, which uh, in a uh, quantum language means that you are creating a hybrid mode, which is a mixture between uh, the electrons and the holes. Now, if you are, so the uh, discussion in uh, uh, the paper by Van Osta and uh, et al. is uh, about the connection uh, between the electron and hole states on the vacuum edges of the sample established by the hybrid modes propagating along the boundaries between the superconductor uh, and uh, the quantum hole regime. Now, I'm getting, sorry, I don't want to jump. Okay, so uh, now we are getting uh, again to the last uh, type of measurement I'm showing. That's a, a question which Ray was asking. Uh, so these uh, panels are zoom in, uh, could be thought of as uh, zoom ins into uh, the two uh, fan diagrams I was showing before. But now we are sweeping magnetic field only in a tiny range around one Tesla only few millitesla. And again, we are applying zero DC current and finite DC current to kill uh, the super feature, superconducting features. Otherwise, those two panels are measured at the same excitation current. And the vertical axis here is a gate. So compared to those panels, the picture is rotated by 90 degrees. The previous pictures of supercurrent as a function of magnetic field that I was showing you before would be measured at fixed gate voltage by applying a finite DC current. So uh, they would uh, kind of, these two panels would correspond to the, if I compare one cross section here and here, that would correspond to, uh, let's say, comparing the finite bias and zero bias in this curve, in this plot. Okay, so at finite bias, uh, we only have some uh, 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 non-periodic uh, background, while at finite bias, you see uh, the same oscillations which we have seen uh, independence of the critical current. And the point, uh, going back to Leonard's question, uh, is that the phase of those oscillations depend on the gate voltage. So the periodicity is hopefully visible to you is the same in any cross section, right? The periodicity as a distance between the oscillations in the as a function of magnetic field is the same. But uh, if you try to say, well, where's your uh, zero? It depends on the gate voltage. Yes. Do the oscillations disappear in between the Landau levels? 
Um, something is visible throughout, and uh, there are regions where they disappear uh, to the, uh, uh, so for example, here and uh, here. So they're mostly uh, uh, visible uh, throughout the range, but there are narrow bands where they disappear. Um, I cannot say whether those positions correspond to the Lando level. I think those are more frequent. But I cannot say uh, whether the critical uh, current there is just uh, negligibly small, which is possible. Um, one should realize, of course, this is kind of a proxy for the supercurrent measurement because uh, zero bias resistance will tell you uh, there is a suppression of resistance even though um, critical current will be almost no, not <coughs> noticeable. So imagine those uh, curves of differential resistance with a tiny region of suppressed current. So those may be some of those uh, places where you do see some uh, variations, but they're very kind of shallow. You're getting the sample area, but you're getting the superconducting flux quantum, not the single particle. Binnaker's paper predicts a single particle one, and I have a full page of discussion what could be the kind of mechanism. Uh, so um, the uh, okay up to now, uh, I'm saying that this is at least in the features which we observe here is consistent with a picture where you have uh, electrons. Uh, going around the sample, well, the single particles going as electrons on one side, as holes on the other side. Uh, because if you look at the expressions uh, in uh, that paper and kind of try to decipher, there's a lot of trigonometrical formulas there. But uh, at the end, you see that uh, the flux which they, uh, uh, which comes out in their formulas is not, sorry, I have to, I probably wrap uh, the talk. Uh, the flux doesn't go through just the geometrical area of the sample, but it goes through the geometrical area covered by uh, those states. So instead of the distance L between the contacts, it's reduced by the distance uh, which your state on average has from the superconductor. So um, you have the uh, Magnetic field times the width times the length minus this uh, distance, which is of the order of magnetic lengths. Um, the first term gives the standard uh, flux through the geometrical area through the sample, but this correction uh, is kind of interesting. So first of all, it will depend on uh, the gate voltage through dependence of D, because as you're changing your gate voltage, you're bringing your edge states those uh, edge states here closer, further away from the superconductor. Um, and the second point is that this is a fairly large quantity because your D should be of the order of magnetic lengths. So you have W divided by magnetic lengths. So W is uh, two microns, L is uh, 20, mic uh, 20 nanometers. So this is a uh, parameter of the order of 100, which may explain uh, the mesoscopic nature of the observed features. Essentially, you have a large additional uh, phase, which is picked up uh, by the mode propagating along the superconductor and uh, kind of acquiring a large phase. Why, why do you say that? I mean, the, the superconductor mm -hmm. inside is all a fixed phase, right? So it's yes. So uh, uh, there are actually two contributions uh, of, of this phase. Uh, there is uh, one which is uh, kind of trivial through which I uh, started talking, but then I switched actually to the discussion which belongs to the next uh, view graph. So there is a, a phase uh, which is coming from the fact that your trajectory doesn't go all the way around metal, but it has a certain distance from the metal. So then the area through which your flux is threaded is reduced by this distance. So rather than having the full length of the junction, you have length minus 
something small twice the order of magnetic length, but uh, in fact, this quantity depends on gate voltage. So if you're looking at uh, the periodicity as a function of your flux, you, find you suddenly find that there is an additional phase which is gate dependent. And I'm arguing that that's the origin of the gate dependence of this phase. But in fact, the same factor also comes uh, at, as a separate term in the expression, which is um, sine or cosine of this phase alone, which is multiplying uh, the current. And that is a result of the phase picked by your Cooper pairs as they're jumping between the superconductor and the edge. So essentially, uh, the uh, uh, vector potential on the edge of the superconductor and in the edge state is different because there's a small difference d in their position. And uh, the Cooper pairs have to pick that extra momentum as they're hopping on the edge. Then the so delta. Are you about this in terms of like a hot spot picture basically? You're, when you have two terminals yeah. between the three, uh, you inject from the corners from two opposite corners, and then everything else is just uh, I, I have not thought about that in, in terms of the uh, uh, hot spots. You are talking about the uh, 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 quantum hole uh, picture where you inject the uh, um, non-equilibrium electron coming from one contact into the other contact. But right now, uh, this is um, zero bias. So uh, should at least, uh, if you are discussing in terms of the supercurrent, should be no uh, dissipation. Uh, so in this picture, I am assuming that uh, the mode is kind of uniform along the width of the contact, which may not be the case. So you may have uh, lots of other interesting things. You can have um, uh, vertices. We, you can have, uh, due to vertices, uh, the non, what's going on? Non uh, uh, uniform phase accumulation. You can have the uh, mode being lost because your electron tunnels in. Um, kind of probably leave that uh, to the questions. So l let me just uh, quickly say that uh, there is this oscillation with the same phase coming through the fact that the pairs between the edge and the edge of the superconductor and the quantum hole edge have difference in momentum. So when your Cooper pair jumps from the superconductor to the edge, there is a phase, uh, there is a momentum mismatch, which accumulated over the width of the contact uh, gives you oscillation. So uh, this term uh, qual uh, qualitatively accounts for, I think, is the same uh, qualitative argument uh, as uh, 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 this picture suggests uh, you may have either electron or hole arriving to the other edge of the sample when you have the hole, you have higher supercurrents. When you have electron, you would not have supercurrent. Uh, but basically, um, it would uh, depend on uh, this phase, which is controlled by the gate voltage. If I uh, very naively uh, plug the product of uh, two terms, one dependent on the uh, geometrical phase, as discussed here, and another which depends just on this um, Additional phase, you will get uh, pictures of this type, which I'm arguing kind of remind you of the uh, experiment, including the regions where uh, the supercurrent is suppressed. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a cartoon, if you wish. It's not a calculation. It's just taking a product of uh, sine of this term and the sine. Gate voltage, yes, yeah. What I'm uh, trying to say here is that, yeah, if I assume that D is uh, uh, changing around some uh, value with some uh, uh, linear dependence on gate voltage, I will obtain uh, the slanted uh, uh, con counters from the term of the previous view graph and uh, variations of the amplitude uh, which will be dependent only on uh, gate voltage or D. Okay. Mm -hmm. The yellow, so uh, the theory, why, what's happening? 
th th this is not a theory, right? Again, that's just a cartoon showing how a product of two terms would look like. In the theory, the expression is uh, quite complex because uh, I, I had to kind of uh, simplify the trigonometry there in some limit. Uh, in fact, uh, the limit in which the theory is, sorry? Yeah, the theory is made for type one, uh, so there are no vertices. Uh, field is assumed to be very small, and I think that the level spacing is small, assumed to be smaller than delta. So, so it's a very kind of uh, 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 roughly applicable, maybe not applicable at all, but more sort of motivation of what are the uh, dependencies that could exist if this mechanism works. Let me just um, uh, finally probably put this instead of the uh, summary. The summary probably is uh, quite trivial. So uh, the big question which we have is this uh, periodicity. I believe that the general picture which I was discussing uh, with Andreev State going around the sample uh, can be uh, uh, modified if you include Coulomb interactions. Usually Andreev States are sort of as neutral because you have electron and hole propagating in the same region. But here, electrons and holes are propagating on the opposite sides of the sample. So if, according to the theory, you are filling those levels whenever they approach to the Fermi level, you would be putting two electrons on this part of the trajectory with opposite spins and two holes with opposite spins from the uh, second uh, Andreev state. You would be putting those at the same value of gate voltage or magnetic field. And if those are repelling, they will push themselves to the by half a period, resulting in doubling of periodicity from the predicted h over e to the observed uh, h over 2e. Uh, another uh, possibility um, is that uh, the supercurrent somehow flows al al along each edge separately, uh, either because uh, there is something else uh, which allows for this current uh, to be coherent. Uh, there are uh, recent pre predictions uh, uh, by Nazarov, uh, which uh, claim that uh, the supercurrent can be established along one edge, even though it is chiral, if you provide some way of feeding back the information about the phase difference from the top superconductor back to the bottom. Another explanation uh, is that there is uh, some trivial edge state going uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, for example, due to the charge density buildup, like uh, uh, was uh, uh, studied by a number of groups, including uh, Inamir's group. Um, this uh, is, in my opinion, less likely because we observe the supercurrent throughout the plateau. The effect of the lightning rod enhancement of density near the edge would result in uh, the density uh, necessary for the counter-propagating state to be reached at the edge of the plateau. Uh, also, the quantization in those samples uh, is quite good when you reach, uh, when you increase your temperature to suppress superconductivity in the context. And uh, the presence of counter-propagating states, of course, would uh, modify your quantized uh, resistance. But uh, uh, there, there is still, uh, I guess, room for uh, questioning uh, either mechanism, because I don't think that uh, either one of them is uh, solidly established at this point. Okay, well, thanks for your attention. So uh, I kind of tell you what I know about it, but I'm by no means an expert in it. So it's supposed to be amorphous. Uh, it's um, uh, TC of about 10 Kelvin and uh, a critical uh, current of uh, upper critical current of uh, upper critical field of I think about eight Tesla. Uh, it's uh, very heavy if anybody is interested in coupling to spin polarized states. Uh, um, 40 plus and 70 plus the atomic weights of molybdenum uranium. Uh, 
And the nice thing about it is it forms uh, good con high transparency and type contacts without sticking layer. No. Yes. So there, yeah, the, there is a question of why the periodicity is actually in any ways related to the periodicity at zero field, because you would say at zero field, the field is expelled and focused in the junction, while at high field, it should all go uh, more or less uniformly, and hence uh, you would have no focusing and larger period. Uh, the problem in explaining the di uh, discrepancy in, it would work in the, it would work the other way around. It would make your period larger. So, yeah, yeah. My, my, my understanding is that uh, at least, uh, you know, based on talking to people who are experts in uh, uh, flux uh, trapping in the films, that it is conceivable to imagine that you arrive at high field, you kind of start measuring, you train your system, after that, uh, you have a number of vertices which made it through the uh, surface barrier, and then they're sitting there, and in the range of fields, you are uh, essentially not adding any extra vertices, which means that you are effectively still focusing delta B, while delta, other B. delta B, yeah. I, I don't know whether it's uh, making, uh, uh, wh whether it is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in uh, fl uh, trap fluxes in, in films, but at least it would be consistent with us observing uh, uh, the uh, periodicity which indicates that the flux is uh, uh, delta B is still expelled and focused in graphene, and occasionally the picture does shift, so it does change. So that would be consistent with some vertex uh, getting inside the contact. Yes, so uh, uh, it's actually uh, in, in the same uh, uh, paper by uh, Gaim's group, there is a nice uh, supplementary which, uh, um, I mean. 10 nanometers, how far? Some 10 nanometers, yeah. There is a, a, a SEM, I, I don't know in our case, but they have, um, I would say so, yeah. Could be 20, but I would say more 10 because it's barely visible, there is a little ledge. So it's not exactly 1D, right? It's a small strip of. Other questions? Um, yeah. Sorry, Can you mm -hmm. briefly uh, comment on the concept of variable space and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the picture of some width? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so there, there is uh, uh, a question of what is the induced coherence length of that. Uh, state, I think that uh, there is a length which is made of Fermi velocity and delta, um, sorry, Fermi velocity rather velocity of the edge states, which for regular edge states is uh, Fermi velocity, but here the boundary with uh, the metal could be different. So that length uh, is uh, shorter than the uh, uh, width of the contacts. Um, I'm not sure if uh, it leads to the uh, decay, or could be an additional factor for suppressing the current. Uh, experimentally, we see in a few samples which I can compare that a sample which is five microns wide, the contacts are five microns wide versus two and a half, even though the distance between the contacts is smaller, we see much less supercurrent. So the supercurrent suffers from the width of the contact, which would be consistent with that mode getting lost for either being absorbed as a single particle in the superconductor or because of some uh, natural coherence lengths made out of combination of delta velocity. So if I naively say uh, V Fermi is the same as before with zero magnetic field and delta is of course the same, we have seen that psi was 500 nanometers. So uh, that's the range, and it's smaller than the distance than the widths. Okay, smaller but compare. I mean, maybe e to the minus three or something of that sort. Okay, well, very nice talk. Uh, thank you. Very much. Thank you.